Today we're gonna make one of our number 68 natural Western vertical wallets. I've got Michael's help in the shop here. We're gonna use some three to four ounce natural American Vachetta leather for this wallet. Since the wallet has four layers of leather in some areas, it's better to use a two to three ounce for the trim and pocket pieces if you can. But if you can't, three to four will work just fine for the whole wallet. We're using our clicker dies and a press, but if you'd like to try this wallet out on your own, you can download the pattern from the link in the description and print it out. I like to glue the pattern to poster board or oak tag to make the patterns easier to trace. Then use a precision hobby knife to carefully cut out each pattern piece. This part is optional, but we run the pocket pieces through our bell skiver to make the bottom edge a little thinner. It just helps reduce bulk overall. I like to use edge paint on my wallets, but first it helps to do a light burnish with water and an edge slicker. You don't have to spend too much time on this part, but the paint will look so much better if you start with a nice smooth edge. We use Vernice edge paint from Rocky Mountain Leather Supply. This is the golden brown color, 010, which I think looks really great on natural leather, even after the leather has aged a bit. You'll find these template pieces on the last page of the pattern file. These help you mark the areas that need glue and should save you a little time. For glue, we use a water-based contact adhesive called Aqualim 315. You can pick it up at District Leather Supply. And these squeeze bottles are from Amazon. I'll have all these links down in the description. With contact adhesive, you want to apply it to both sides and let it dry for a couple minutes till it's tacky. Then set it aside and use a smooth hammer to tap it down. That's what gives it a really strong bond. Careful when you're hammering though, because you can dent the leather and mark it up pretty badly. As always, I like to mention that we're using an industrial sewing machine, but you can always bust out the stitching punches, needles, and thread and stitch everything on here by hand as well. This is just how I prefer to do it. But if you're interested in picking up a sewing machine, make sure you watch my recent video called Best Leather Sewing Machine for Beginners. Then we use our Tandy Heat Imprinter to emboss our logo. Heat will give it a darker emboss, but you can also just use a regular Arbor Press or a hand setter and a mall to emboss your logo. It just depends on what look you're going for. Just make sure you emboss before you glue and stitch these pieces together because you can't do it afterwards. Then we'll do a little sanding to level the edges out and give it a nice bevel on both sides. Then we'll lay down the stitch. If you're hand stitching, you don't have to go all the way to the top and run a stitch through the single layer part of this panel. That would just be a waste of time, but on the machine it doesn't add much time and I think it looks pretty nice. And just because I know I'll get this question, I'm using size 92 bonded nylon thread and a size 18 needle. Now this is the part that would be really easy to forget. You have to treat the edges of these pocket panels before you stitch them to the outside panel or else you won't be able to get to them later. So we just run the same process of a quick slick down and some edge paint. This is the most difficult part to stitch if you're using a machine. It takes a lot of time and practice to get comfortable with this, but if you just take it slow, it's doable. Michael's making it look easy here because he's an old pro, but don't be afraid to use some scraps and practice these trim pieces a few times before you do it on the final project. We're gonna take a little break to thank the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can use it to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, or just get lost in creativity. There are a few classes that have really stuck out to me that I think would be perfect for this audience. One of them is YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD. There's another one called Productivity for Creatives, Building a System for Bringing Out Your Best. And there's one that I just recently finished that I highly recommend, it's called Video for Instagram, Tell an Engaging Story in Less Than a Minute by Hollies. I came away from that one just super pumped to start making some videos, it's contagious. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can just stay focused and follow the creativity. And here's some exciting news. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start 
exploring creativity today. I wanna to give a massive thank you to Skillshare for supporting this channel and giving me the opportunity to keep putting out these videos for you for free. All right, let's get back to the wallet. A little backstory on these trim pieces. We started by selling a lot of our number 52 vertical wallets, but it always bothered me that the spine is only one layer on the 52. It made it quite flimsy, especially over time. So I designed these Western style trim pieces to give it more structure and I couldn't be happier with it. This is by far my favorite of all of our wallets. I like the added structure, but I also love the look of the trim. Anytime you get three to four layers of leather together, this sanding step is really important. You don't have to use a wheel like this, you can just sand it by hand, but anything to make sure the edge is totally level because it's not likely that after all the gluing and stitching, you were able to keep every part of the edge perfectly lined up. If you have any gaps or uneven edges, it'll make the edge paint look terrible. It's kind of like auto body. The more time you spend prepping for the paint, the better off you'll be. Also, having the edge leveled before stitching is super important because you might be lined up perfectly on the top layer while sewing or even using a stitching punch, but if the edges are wonky, then you might be sewing off the edge on the bottom layer without realizing it. That's why we always sand the edges before we stitch. And heads up, painting four layers of leather is a bit tougher than painting one thin layer. So you might have to make a few passes, but again, if you're prepped right by sanding and burnishing, then you should end up with a beautiful smooth edge. And that's it. Don't forget to pick up the pattern down in the description and we'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.